Welcome to a quick roundup of the Octarius mission briefing preview from Games Workshop that was on on Saturday. There was a lot of great stuff in this, mostly for the orcs, a little bit of guard and a little teaser at the end which I'll tell you about later on. So first of all we got the new edition of Kill Team which looks amazing. Now a trailer for this dropped on Friday, almost exactly 24 hours before the preview, so it is my belief that someone scheduled it wrong or pressed the wrong button and released it early because it just does not make sense to have a preview focused mainly on Kill Team and to release the main thing from it early. It just does not make sense to me. Let me know what you think happened, if it was some grand marketing strategy that I just don't understand or if you think it was an honest mistake. The new Kill Team looks absolutely fantastic. There's a usual board, uh, counters, dice, all that kind of stuff. There's not rulers in the traditional sense, there's a new way of measuring distance. So that's that all seems very interesting. The main thing was the Death Core of Krieg in plastic for the first time. It looks like the range will be interchangeable with the Resin Forge World stuff as well, which is good. But the minis looked absolutely amazing. I'll definitely be getting these ones. And to top it all off, New Orcs, New York Commandos, which look like the very dirty dozen. All the Orcs look like stereotypes from military films uh, down through the years. You've got the tough commander chewing a cigar, you've got the wee guy with the woolly hat on, you've got a grappling grot as well. It seems like a theme with the New York stuff, both in Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40k, that you'll have a cute little grot accompanying the main force, so this is no exception. In the box you get 10 Krieg models and 12 Orc models. You also get enough Orky terrain to make a little Orc shanty town, which is cool. I think me and a few of the guys from the gaming club are going to combine our sets and make an Orc town for a fully thematic board. I was talking to one of my brothers yesterday and he's not a fan of Warhammer uh, but he does watch all my videos. Now I don't know if I should be offended by this but he says it sends his daughter to sleep so that's why he watches them. He pointed out that a lot of the Games Workshop naming conventions are pretty weird to outsiders like the Manskewer Bolt Boys, that kind of thing. So John, just for you, I give you the big knob. The knob is really cool. He looks like Carl Weathers from Predator, which you can't go wrong with really. The orcs in general look a bit different to usual. It's not the same armament for all the commandos in the box. It is like specialists along the lines of more what you'd expect from space marines rather than orcs. And it all looks great. There's a burner boy, a slasher boy, a bomb squig and a little grot. All these guys look amazing. They're multi-part kits I believe so you can build them in a variety of ways. The orc kit has 150 components and the Krieg one has 171 or thereabouts so there's a lot of customizability, there's a lot of variety and it's just a really cool set. Yes there are shovels with the Krieg guys which a lot of people ask about. Like I said earlier there is not even a question about me picking these up. These will be a day one buy day one build for me. For Krieg we've got the Sergeant, who's just a normal Sergeant. We've got the Zealot Veteran, which is a new category. And it's an extremely pious soldier. And he's extra driven and he has even higher faith in the Emperor than your normal Krieg soldier. There's a Hardened Veteran. There was a really cool bit on this model where you can see his bionics through his cloak. It looks really realistic and it's really cool. There's a Medic Veteran and to my eye it looks like you would never ever want to have to visit this guy because he'd just lop your limbs off to fix you. But the model's really nice and he's got a little box of tricks on the floor. So all in all, this box was a real surprise since yesterday anyway when they spoiled it. I'm hoping it'll get a lot more people into Kill Team. It's the easiest way to get into Warhammer 40k in my opinion because it's got such a low model count. You'll only need 10 or so models to actually get into this, probably fewer if you go Space Marines. So it's a really good entryway into the game. It's while stocks last, it won't be around forever, but usual Games Workshop bump, they say you'll be able to pick it up if you want. But they've said that with Cursed City, where you couldn't pick it up if you wanted, and they've said it with Dominion, where you could easily pick it up if you wanted. So I don't know what to tell you. My usual advice stands, get in early or order it from your friendly local game store. I know I'll be doing it that way because it's so much easier. I just put my order in, sit back and it comes to me. No waiting in queues or anything like that. So it's a far easier way of doing it. You miss out on the Games Workshop exclusives, but I can live with that. So we were told it was going to be about 45 minutes and we were at one about the 40 minute mark. So I did not think there would be anything else released and I was totally wrong. 
To kick off the second part, Warzone Octarius, book one, The Rising Tide, was announced. And it's all about the Octarius sector, which is a complete orc stronghold. It's probably the biggest concentration of orcs in the entire galaxy. And the Tyranids, who attack the orcs. The orcs get bigger because they love a fight. The Tyranids get more biomass because the orcs just keep coming. So both sides are feeding each other until they become super, super powerful. And of course there's Imperium intervention and probably Elder intervention just to make sure that things don't get out of control and it doesn't spill into the rest of the galaxy. It's a really cool premise for a big battle and I'm going to pick this one up. I didn't get Charadon but I'll pick this one up. And just as a little aside, they announced just about an entirely New York range. So that's fantastic. There's a dual build kit with the kill rig and the hunter rig. And it's a big trailer pulled by a massive squig. And it's just got orcs hanging off it everywhere. This is obviously to prop up the Beast Snaggers range. I'm loving the aesthetic of the organic material coupled with uh, orky technology. It just looks brilliant. So we've got guys with spears right next to massive cannons. It's weird, but weird in an orky way. And I think it totally works. I'm not sold on the Games Workshop colour scheme. I'm not sure I like the white on the orcs. But, but it'll be fantastic to see what happens when it gets in. Um, other people's hands and they get their colour schemes on it. Now the Beast Boss was probably my favourite model in this entire reveal. He's got a massive power claw with a skull on top of it and then a metal bit underneath. It's a great example of the Beast Snagger's way of working with the organic and the metal fused together. There's another fantastic addition and that's the little targeting squig on his shoulder. And yet again, it's a cute little model to break up the brutality of the orcs, and it really works. Next up, we've got Mozgrod Scragbad, and he's a big boss, and he's riding the Great White Squig, and he's called Big Chompa. This guy is apparently legendary among the Beast Snagger tribes, and you can pretty much see why. Now, I don't really like the White Squig. I think it would look better in red, but it's still a fantastic looking model. I especially love the exhaust vents attached to the side of the Squig. I mean, what are they for? It looks like Mozgrod has most of his right hand side missing and I'm wondering if that's through a blast of some sort or if Big Chompa chomped him. It's another dual purpose kit so you can also build a beast boss on Squigasaur which looks equally as cool and it's in red so prayers answered. There are of course also new boys and they look fantastic. We saw them a few weeks ago, must have been a leak. Maybe it was in the back of another picture, but they look so much better than the old hunched over orcs. I've built a fair few of those ones in my time and I could not get them looking the way I wanted. They all seemed hunched over like gorillas, so I'm so much happier that there is a new boys box out. It'll be a multi-part kit, lots of options, hopefully lots of heads and things like that, and you'll be able to build them however you want. Last but definitely not least, we've got new death copters, and we haven't seen these since the Black Reached box set, which seems like ages ago. I loved these models, but I wasn't playing orcs or collecting orcs at the time, so I actually gave them away to an orc collector because they were so rare. He appreciated them, but I kinda wish I'd kept them. Now I can buy new ones and I'm a happy, happy chappy. There are a few orc gamers in my gaming group and overwhelmingly they were very, very happy. The only thing they were kinda split on was the kill rig. One of them thought it was great, one of them thought it was a bit meh. I personally think it looks great and I can see a lot of potential for these things. There was a lot of shouting in the Twitch chat about where's my space marines, all that kind of stuff, and I could not tell if they were serious. But just at the end of the reveal, there were space marines. There was a little cinematic for Black Templars. I don't know whether it was for animation, for a computer game, or for new models, but I guess we'll find out pretty soon. It's intriguing anyway. So that's it for another Warhammer preview. This one was, in my opinion, excellent and I can't wait for the next one see what else is on the horizon, hopefully new Tyranids to match the Orcs. If you enjoyed this video please consider liking and subscribing and I would really love to hear your comments on it and see what you thought of it. With that being said, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!